Okay, in this video I want to start talking about the fundamentals of logic and here we're going to talk about truth tables and basic connectives. And all I'm going to do in this video is talk about some basic terminology, uh, construct some very basic truth tables, and in the next video we'll, we'll look at uh, creating truth tables for what are known as compound statements and we'll introduce some more definitions and we'll just go from there. Eventually we'll talk about tautologies, contradictions, um, this notion of equivalence and other things as well. But first things first, let's get some ideas going. So what we're concerned with are what are known as verbal or written assertions that are called, we either call them statements or propositions. I'll probably mostly be referring to them as statements. And these statements have to have a truth value, either true or false, but not both. And Notation-wise, we just use lowercase letters to denote these statements. So a little statement P could be the statement 2 plus 3 equals 5. Okay, that's true. Statement Q could be 2 plus 3 equals 23. Well, that's false. And little r could be Patrick JMT wrote 1001 calculus problems for dummies, which is true. Okay, so these are statements. They all have a truth value, true or false. Um, we don't want to talk about, you know, a statement that wouldn't work would be saying something like, it's beautiful outside. You know, that's, that's a matter of opinion. It isn't necessarily true or false. Okay, so the idea is, though, we, we can create new statements. And let me say one other thing. These statements are what are known as primitive statements. Okay. These are called primitive statements. And the idea is you can't really break them down into more basic statements. Okay, so these would sometimes be referred to as primitive statements. So we can create new statements by, a couple, by using a couple different things. We can use negation, or we can combine two or more statements into what are known as a compound statement by using logical connectives. And the connectives we'll use are called conjunction, disjunction, implication, and the biconditional. Okay, so let's go ahead and start talking about truth tables while we go through this as well. So let's talk about negation here. So neg negation, there's a little sort of a, I don't know, it's almost like a sideways L. So the negation you would, uh, for the statement R, we would read this as not R. So my little statement R a second ago said Patrick JMT wrote 1001 calculus problems for dummies. Well, not R in this case would read Patrick JMT did not write 1001 calculus problems for dummies. So that's the idea of negation. You're just sort of doing the, I don't know if you want to call it the opposite. Okay, so for truth tables, we let zero denote false, and a one will mean that a statement is true. So the idea is if P, the original statement, was false, the negation of that would be true. Likewise, if the original statement P was true, its negation would therefore be false. So that would be the truth table for negation. All right, let's keep looking at these here. So conjunction, there's a little, little uh, wedge with the arrow pointing up, and we read this P and R. Okay, so um, I remind myself this little notation because the little wedge that's pointing up, it almost looks like an A. That's how I remember it. And I think, oh, that would be P and R. So that's how I remember the symbol. So let's talk about um, the truth table for conjunction. So suppose that both of my statements were false. Well, in that case, the statement P and Q, I would consider that to be false as well. Suppose that P was true and Q, excuse me, suppose that P was false and Q was true. Well, in that case, again, we want both statements to be true for the, the and statement to be true. So I would still consider that statement to be false. Um, so maybe the statement is that 2 plus 3 equals 23 and Patrick JMT wrote 1001 calculus problems for dummies. Well, that's still not a true statement because part of it is not correct. Um, likewise, if P is true and Q is false, we would still say that that's a false statement. There's, there's one part that's just not correct. And the only way that this compound statement has a value of true is if both statements are true. Okay, so 2 plus 3 equals 5, and Patrick JMT wrote 1001 calculus problems for dummies. Well, that compound statement, we would say, is true. 
So I think that ag agrees with your intuition, hopefully. So disjunction, so that's a little wedge pointing down, and we read this P or R. And notice that we use or in the inclusive sense. So what I mean by that is P or Q is true if either one of the statements is true or if both of the statements are true. So if either one of the statements are true or if they're both true, then we say that's a true statement. The only way that our statement is false is if both the statements are false. So 2 plus 3 equals 23, or the moon is made of cheese. Well, that's a false statement because neither parts of that are correct. So we use or in the inclusive sense. It is certainly possible to use or in the exclusive sense. And there we have the wedge pointed down with a little bar underneath of it. And in that case, the compound statement is, is true um, if only one of P or Q is true, but not both. So if we use it in the exclusive sense, only one of the statements should be true for that compound to be, statement to be true. If both statements are false, it's still false. And if both statements are true, then we say it's false. We won't be using this, uh, this exclusive use of the word or very much. We're going to be using it in the inclusive sense. Although it certainly does get used in the exclusive sense, but I'm not going to focus too much on it. All right, so two more here. Um, I'm going to skip the implication for a second because I think the intuition on that one may be a little confusing. Um, the biconditional, uh, there's a little arrow pointing at both of the statements, and we read that P if and only Q. P if and only Q. And this compound statement is going to be true if both P and Q have the same truth value. So if P and Q are both false, then that statement is going to be true. Likewise, if they're both true, we say it's true. We don't want something that's false to imply something that's true, and likewise something true to imply something false. So the other two statements are going to be um, false for our, uh, our biconditional, and I should be a little careful in my wording there. So, but again, what I want to emphasize is this uh, biconditional is only true if both statements have the same truth value. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, implication. So here we would read this as P implies Q. P is what's known as the hypothesis. Q is the conclusion. And this one may seem a little counterintuitive because the only time that P implies Q is false is if the statement P is true, but Q is false. That's the only time it's false. Otherwise, it's all true. And maybe let's, let's look at this, um, just to give you some intuition to help you remember it, because um, the other ones to me all seem, I don't know, somehow, they seem reasonable. Um, I could create, if somebody said make a, a, a truth table for these other um, one, two, for negation, for the other one, two, three um, columns, I think I, that would be the, the truth table I would make for implication. Uh, maybe it's a little confusing. So let's suppose P is the statement that um, Patrick JMT, so if Patrick, let's just say Patrick JMT has a large dinner, and let's let statement Q be um, Patrick JMT will exercise in the morning. So again, hopefully this will give you some intuition. Maybe it'll satisfy you. Maybe not. We'll see. So, okay. So the first column. Okay. So suppose it's it's not true that I I, I so I didn't have a large dinner. So P is false. I didn't have a large dinner. Well then, I'm not going to exercise in the morning. That seems reasonable. Okay. That seems like that could certainly be be true. Um, let's look at the next one. So suppose um, it's false that I have a large dinner, but I still, so, but it's true that I exercise in the morning. Well, 
maybe that's still possible. You know, maybe it was a nice morning and, um, you know, maybe I just wanted to go out for a bike ride and just wanted to get outside. So, so even though I didn't have a big dinner, it's still possible that I exercise. So we still consider that to be a true statement. The thing we don't want is, okay, so let's suppose I do have a large dinner, so P is true but I don't exercise in the morning. That would be our example of when the implication is false. Last but not least, okay, they're both true. I do have a large dinner and I do exercise in the morning. Well, we would consider that implication to be true. So again, this is the only one to me that sort of bothers my intuition. Uh, maybe, maybe they all bother your intuition. Maybe none of them do, but uh, I just want to uh, point that out because it, it kind of helps me remember this truth table a little bit better. You know, once you work with them, it's like anything. I guess you'll probably eventually get it memorized. But okay, so that's basically all I want to talk about in this video, just the basic connectives, just some, some basic terminology. In the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start making some truth tables for some statements. I'm going to do one and two in a video. I'm going to do a truth table for number one and number two. And then I'm also going to create a truth table for uh, statements for number three and number four. Those um, are going to be a little bit easier for the truth tables, but they're going to tie into some important definitions. So that's why I'm holding them off. And uh, after that, again, we're going to start jumping into some other topics um, about statements being equivalent, um, tautologies, contradictions, and other, other good stuff. So stay tuned, and um, again, hopefully this video, this first one, makes a little bit of sense. Um, and those basic truth tables that we constructed, um, what I just do with them, there they are. These basic truth tables, I'm going to refer to these a lot um, in the other videos. So, um, you know, if you are interested, you may even jot this down, or if you have your book, you may have it open. Um, because I'm going to, you know, go through them pretty quickly, but I'm definitely going to reference them quite a bit.